I'd like to call upon Esther. Round of applause. Ladies first. Of all nations international is also known as Loani and they're a champion of diversity. Before we can be kind to others and to be able to give to others and charity and being supportive and being helpful doesn't mean that someone has to keep a few hours out of the seven days a week that you will go out and do some charity work. It's so easy to do it in your probably your employment, whatever you are doing, uh, a smile to someone, maybe in the lift, or uh, stop your car to, you know, for someone to just cross the road. So I got asked if I'd share my story today. Um, How are you? No, uh, because we we were taught never to talk about things. Who said that? My family, and we were always taught to put family. everybody else first. This is your family. Um, and that's what I do in my life. And actually, to be fair, um, I love it. So every time that I'm touching people and I'm listening to them and I'm helping them, that's my that's my healing, actually. Um, but I just like to say that behind every face, it's not necessarily what you think it is. Um, so I wear a ball gown, um, and I have, you know, hair, whatever, um, and you look at me and you may make your own assumptions, uh, and all I'd like to say is that uh, it's so much deeper than that. It's, if I can help somebody, if I can inspire somebody to do something that they wouldn't do, if I can get you to feel more confident than you did when you walked into this room, if I can get you to know how beautiful you really are in every shape, every size, every colour, every disability, and every person, then that is the message that I will leave for you today. Uh, so my name is Anjuan Walia. Um, at the age of 21, I was actually raped in um, on my birthday party. Um, and I would say that that was the making of me. And that incident basically grew me into who I am. I was going off to university that year, went off to university with the help of my brother and my sister-in-law. And while I was at university, I was very, very ill. And it was very difficult for me to complete my first year of university, but I did it. I then graduated, uh, graduated, did an amazing job, got a 2-2, and I was so happy with what I got. Um, did a lot of work, I worked in marketing, and then at the age of 30, I met my husband. And um, we decided to get married. I got married. I then turned 40, and 40 was definitely the making of my of my life, as they would say. And turning 40, I then uh, founded a charity called Food for All. Food for All feeds and homeless. So we feed around London. We feed around um, East London and Central London. I've now just secured a feeding bus, and the feeding bus has been donated to us by National Express. And what's happening with that feeding bus is it's actually going to be converted. We're going to go out and feed the homeless. And during the day, it's going to be a social enterprise. It's, it's been quite a journey. I do a lot of other work as well. I've worked in the domestic sexual abuse field for the last 14 years. I left my job last year and formed my own business. It's called Self Love. And Self Love is basically um, a business that supports people uh, by coaching, I'm a Reiki practitioner and I do a number of other things as well. And what happened to me 18 months ago was I was also diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And fibromyalgia has that, it's been very difficult for me. There's days though where I haven't been able to get up. Um, but I still persevere and I still do what I have to do. If I have to sit in my bed, I do it from my bed. Um, and I'm all about paying it forward. And my motto is self-love is not vanity, it's sanity. I'm a life coach, I'm a holistic coach. I support people from the fact of self-love, not just about the fact that I want to set up a business, how do I do that? I want to work on them, break their conditionings down, get them to where they need to be so they don't have to go to somebody else to have help. So please, you know, if there's anything that you take from today, please take self-love, yeah? Embed it in you. If anybody wants any help, if anybody wants any direction, I'm here to do that. Thank you very much. Wow, okay. So here I am. Um, I've been invited by my very good friend, Andrew, to the Survivors Awards. And 
the stories that I've heard over here are just absolutely incredible. Um, the, the journeys that different types of people have, have actually gone through, they've gone through, gone through hell and they've literally come back again to only show up as the grandest and best versions of themselves and it's truly inspiring that what self-love and having that desire, having that passion, having that unthinkable, undoubtful mindset that that nothing will stop me from showing up to the things that I want to achieve in my life, no matter what kind of disability life has thrown at me, no matter what hurdle life has thrown at you, no matter what choices led you to where you are, you are 100% capable of picking yourself back up again, right? You have the complete control to literally pick yourself back up, take ownership of your life, no matter how much stuff is sent your way, you know, no matter how much it, it trods you down, and trust me, life trods you down a lot, but having that faith, having that faith in God, or whoever you believe, in some kind of higher source, higher being, will look out for the grand story that is your life, right? I mean, there were people here who spoke about not being able to kind of find work, not being able to kind of move, not, not being able to kind of function on day-to-day -day activities without the assistance of someone else, not, not being able to escape from, from um, situations in their domestic households. But they did, you know. Life wasn't that bad yet that there wasn't no single piercing pinhole light that you couldn't see, right? These people are, these people took extreme ownership of their lives and, and said, no, I'm not falling down today. I'm not gonna just stop here. You can, you can literally break my back. One person over here spoke about how their struggle with domestic abuse led their partner to actually beat them so badly that they actually broke that person's back. But whilst that person was, was healing, laying on their back, they had the vision, they had the mindset on, on how to get out of this toxic relationship that this person was in. And they manifested every single thought that they could think of. They envisioned it, they wrote it down, they planned it right down to the T. And if these amazing people can get through that, what is stopping you, you know? Like, there's, there's absolutely nothing stopping you. Hell, what is stopping me, right? I've got a minor little speech impediment in comparison to some of the things that these guys have actually gone through over here. My finger is absolutely so tiny. But being around these people, wow, you know what? It's so inspiring, it's so... There's so much gratitude towards, towards what I have in life right now. And I've been given every single tool, right, you know? I've been given the exact same hours that every single person in that room over there has 24 hours in a day. How do I spend those 24 hours? These people were that relentless for them to get out of whatever kind of position they were in to, to a far superior one that they envisioned themselves to be in. You can do that. I can do that. It all comes down to you being able to kind of want it that badly, right? Yeah, like, yes, you know what? 
anyone can want something bad enough, but it's how you execute that vision you have. Right? I am so thankful for Andrew for inviting me down today. She has had such an incredible journey herself. She's had every little thing thrown at her, but the but the resilience in which she kind of sees where she will be in 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 a fragment of time in in the years to come is just astonishingly she's like a magnet right her vision her work ethic her whole life she she does not care what she looks like she does not care what life presents to her she does not care what the universe keeps throwing at her but she's telling the universe you can throw everything you want at me I'm still gonna get to that goal where I want to be and that attitude her attitude towards life and counting the blessings that she has is phenomenal and Andrew, I would personally like to thank you for inviting me down and nominating me as well for next year's Survivors Awards. And let's see where I am in one year's time, right? And for anyone else out there, you know, you don't need a piece of paper to ac acknowledge your accomplishments you've you've made it you've made it this far in life that means yeah that means that that means that the universe God is not done with you yet if you wake up every single day and you're still breathing you're still eating you you can still carry out your day-to-day -day tasks that means you know what and the man upstairs he's not done with you yet he's got He's got like a bigger life and a bigger vision for you to fulfill that purpose at the moment. So what are you worrying about? You've got nothing to worry about. Just align, <coughs> just align yourself to that thing that you want to do and I guarantee you, you will get to where you want to be. Doors will naturally open. I never ever thought that I was going to be sitting around these kinds of people, right? People that have gone through amazing hurdles and gone through it, passed through it, started up businesses, started up charitable organizations, started up groups to help other people. That is inspiring. That work is, that work speaks tenfold. And I'm grateful for God and I'm grateful for the universe to presenting doors to me, for me, for me to be able to rub shoulders with these people here today and just show up don't be afraid he's not done with you yet focus on your plan focus on your vision focus on your dream and you will get there but you've got to have that relentless work ethic thank you guys sing speech